Hi, thank you for tuning in. I am Sunita Mal. I work as a director of AI model systems at Neomap. Today, we are going to talk about a peculiar kind of crime scene investigation. This is Cube CSI, and our focus is who killed my pod, exactly who has done it. Every intriguing investigation begins with a disaster, and ours is no different. It started off by Cube Control, apply my Pixie Dust Magical app, which is we thought is well tested in local environment and bare metal. And as soon as we deployed, deployed, excuse me, all hell broke loose. We started to see a container being killed left and right with OM kill as a reason and error code, exit code 137. And this is then going into crash loop back, which is a pure joy to look at when you are getting things out into production. So, so then that sparked a massive hunt for what exactly happened and who killed the pot. So let's start with the investigation board. Um, we have a particular container process that's being killed repeatedly, potentially uh, because it's being a memory hogger. Now we know that the kill is a forceful, brutal, and it's killed with a sick kill as a signal. So it's either somebody in somebody with more power has killed the process without the, the desired wishes, and it's a runtime error then. Okay, so we, we know uh, some context and let's look at the details for how the containers run on a host machine and then who are all in charge um, in making the container process lifecycle run on a host. So we obviously have a host, the, the bare metal or the instance or virtual. And then on top, we have the container runtime. And container runtime is comprised of two different levels, the lower level runtime and higher level runtime. The lower level deals with interacting with systems, host using system calls and making use of uh, kernel and OS features. Container D, which is the higher level runtime, then deals with the higher level uh, APIs, APIs that interfaces users and deals with image management, et cetera, aspects. So then we have the runtime that's broken down into two levels, low level and high level. Run C and container D are uh, two very popular examples of these runtime, because obviously there are many different other runtimes available too. So now we have container runtime, and then your process that we call container then runs on top of it, and the, the layer underneath the runtime and the host then guarantees the isolation for your container process, so they are kind of not stepping onto each other's toes. So this is what happens on the host level. Now when we put Kubernetes in the mix, that is uh, a a uh, container orchestrator, not just on one host, on many hosts, then we need another uh, process who is responsible for managing container processes on the host on its own way and also managing across all the other servers, which is essentially what Kubernetes is. Um, a part of it, I should say, has become very big. So uh, that process that we're talking about that deals the management at the host level is called Kubelet. That is a systemd process that manages uh, your process running. And the way it does it is by implicitly talking to your container runtime that's provisioned on your node. Now, then that then talks to image registry and uh, deals with the container process lifecycle. Now, um, C advisor is, 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 a, is a way to grab uh, container resources, utilization, and stats about it, which is a part of a kubelet. So, Kubelet then talks to the container runtime to facilitate the life cycle of container processes. And it also has C advisors for the metrics collection. Now there are other parts uh, in that figure that I'm not going to touch upon very much because that's kind of not the focus of the discussion. Now uh, in current version, all the way up to K20, the, the way Kubelet talks to container runtime is via a thin layer called Docker shim, which is, which is a means to mit mitigate the communication uh, or overhead with talking to Docker. This is all going to change a lot in K20 and 22, but uh, for what we're talking about, it's not um, so much relevant. Okay, so coming back to, uh, to, to our actual investigation, then uh, we know that our containers are being forcefully killed, but it's not through manual intervention, then based on what we have discussed, it's either the kubelet 
um, who is in charge of managing the process running from a cube viewpoint or an OS kernel then who is in charge of running processes on the host. One of the tools are killing the process. They, they, it doesn't look like there could be other suspects that we would have to deal with. So uh, let's talk about what container process is and, and the, the isolation, how that's guaranteed at, at the OS level. Um, namespace and C group, these are the two important aspects that allow for the isolation of the container process. Now, namespace is responsible for isolations from a file system, networking, and other aspects. C group, on the other hand, is a feature of kernel that allows for hierarchical management of resource and resource uh, requirements. And C group memory and other uh, features or resources can be used to, 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 uh, to manage via C group. Now, uh, to, to elaborate more on that, I think it, it kind of, a bit of a demo would, would help. And that's what we would now look at. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is start a container process. And the container process that I'm going to start is essentially IPython um, on a container from NumPy there. And all I'm doing here is essentially saying, give me IPython as a process from the image NumPy dev and, and run it. And now what I want to do is I want to look at the stats for how much uh, uh, footprint this container is is running with. And as you can see, it's telling here that it's using 35 meg of memory and some CPU. Oops. And now what I'm going to do is start the same container again under different name with 40 meg as memory requirements. Now, if you see, I have two processes running. They have been running for a little bit. Now let's talk C group here. So C group is managed through a file system in a way like this. And you can see all the kind of resources that C group then would manage. Now, if I look into, sorry, look into memory, I would see these are the kind of aspects of memory that's then managed by C group. What's of interest is kernel memory and also memory um, limits and, and few other aspects. Okay, so if you look Closely here, you would see a folder here called Docker. Oh, we're not seeing it. Yeah, it's there. So um, under memory, then we have Docker. And you can see there are two uh, these um, IDs that corresponds to the container that we have run just now, 4437, 4437 and 65C, um, so this is short ID and this is the full ID of the container. Now let's have a bit of a look into what the memory limits for the containers are. And I'm just going to cat the memory limit type and all I'm doing here is say, give me full, full ID of my container, that's 40 meg limit. And you can see when I do this, I am getting about 40 meg as a process. Now, if I just go in here and make this, I would see a really large number. This is actually the maximum in 64 container by the multiple of uh, 4 KB for page size, which is the Linux page size. So it's a way of saying that this container is running without a memory limit that is unlimited memory. Now let's do another thing. Let's bring up another container with a with a 20 meg memory. And this is obviously not enough memory that we needed to run with. And then we started the container. Now, if we look at what happened, we see that actually the 20 meg container was just killed. Now, what we want to do is look at the inspect this container. And all I'm doing, doing is saying, do I inspect on this container? And I want to only look at the state measure. And you can see it's saying, this process was actually OM killed with an exit code of 137. 
And we could do the same thing with 40 Mac container. And we would see then it's not OMQL, it's still running, etc. So we just simulated the OMQL scenario in our local environment. Now I want to show you something interesting, and this is about the, the SOP error that we were getting earlier here. It was saying that your container doesn't support SOP capabilities and memory lim limited without SOP. So that means if I asked for container to have only 20 meg memory, my container is only going to get limited to 20 meg because the SOP, which is a capability of uh, systems to go beyond what's uh, available in physical RAM, and, and extend, uh, use a little bit more than what the capacity is. And that aspect is disabled now. So we, we can't really use more than what we have. But this is my Mac now. And I would run the same two command like before. So I'm running limit, uh, limitless KCSI and 20 meg KCSI and I would you would see that when I run this, actually the 20 meg container is actually still running. It hasn't been killed. And I could see Docker stacks on this. And I would see it's still using 90 meg, but it's actually making um, use of the swap for, for the extra that it needs. Now let's do a differently. Let's give it a little, let's make it swap less. And I do that by um, explicitly specifying the same memory as swap and thereby disabling the swap. And the moment I do that, you would see that my container, the strict one is killed, which is exactly for the same reason. And we could inspect on this. And you could see that it's actually OMQ for the same reason. Okay, so we are talking about Docker here like this. Um, and if we are in a cube context, as in if, uh, if the node is a, a member of a cube cluster, then we would also see here cube pod at the same level as Docker. Now, we can see here in this example that there is actually one pod running in here. In a, and in the same way as we had a Docker container running. And if we look into that pod, we would see that we have now two containers running inside this pod. Okay, so presumably one is the pause container, which is the container that um, first gets created to create the networking in the right name space and environments. And then the actual process container is created. So everything is set up beforehand. Uh, but if, we, if, the, if this pod had, two containers in it, then we would see here three, um, three entries for three different containers, including one for pause. So that was about, uh, that was about QPod. Now, quickly want to touch on the process. And if you do, okay, so, Let's just, so we, we said a container is a um, Linux process. How do I know what is the process ID for my container? And to do that is essentially this. What we say is we say Docker inspect, and I want to inspect the process ID for this container with an ID um, that is that belongs to this particular limitless KCSI container. So in a way of saying is, give me, uh, we ask for the pro process ID by doing a Docker inspect using the container ID. And then we do a process tax. And you can see that 3505 is the process ID on the host level, as in the host sees it as this 3505 ID, and this is pointing to an IPython process. Now, there's an interesting, pseudo file system based on FIFO that Linux manages. And this is basically under proc. So proc is for process. And we could say 3505 
and then we would see all these um, properties of the process. I guess some of them are um, some of them are the 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 stream processes or pipe processes that other systems uses to to communicate then on. Now, I want to particularly talk about the limits here, and you could. And you can see all the limits are mentioned here in terms of various kinds of limits. Now, particularly want to talk about O and score. And this is basically, this is how the system manages what is the score for OM for this process. And in the event of a memory crunch, the scores are used to decide which process should get killed. There are actually three files on unproc for OM. One is the score, which actually is used to manage the score or record the score. The other are two adjustment files, as in how much you want to offset the score. Um, uh, and there's two for different Linux versions, but that's not so much relevant for what we're talking about. So we had a look at how C group um, works uh, and allows for con container processes isolation. And we also look through how OM scores are managed and how container knows which process to then kill. Okay, it's slightly changing the gear and talking more about how do we ensure the, how do we ensure the quality of service and resource requirements? So when a pod is running on a Kubernetes, it, it allows, uh, users to specify the resource requirements. And it does this in three different fashion. One is you basically don't specify any limits. And in that case, the quality of service becomes the best effort. And then the other one is bustable where you give it a range and based on the range, the queue will try to best place it. These kind of part give a quality of service as bustable. Now the third one is guaranteed. If you give the same, uh, if, if you give the same memory requirement as limit, then the container, the process is called uh, guaranteed quality of service from the pod viewpoint. And the guaranteed ones are the best kind of pods. They are least likely to get killed in the event of OM. And they are also good pod in a way that it's easier for cube to manage um, in, in placing them. There is no variability or fuzziness in what kind of resource requirement that would um, give us. And in saying that, the best effort pods are then the most likely to get killed because they are the most unpredictable from resource management viewpoint. So we talked about resource requirement and quality of service and how likely a pod is likely to get killed. Now, in terms of resource, there's two broad kind of resources, compressible and incompressible. Compressible means if you breach your limits, you are likely to get throttled, but it won't be a deadly event. Incompressible, on the other hand, says that if you breach your limits, C group or something would kill your process. And memory is an incompressible resource, and CPU then is a is, uh, uh, compressible resource. So based on what we have discussed, I think the question here is, can cube overcome it or can cube allow to overcome it? And how about Linux kernel? And this is a very important question and it's not we are posing now, it's been asked for many years from a kernel viewpoint. And the common view is that it's a feature, not a bug, but there are contrary opinions as well around uh, overcommittal is a bug. So, uh, can Cube overcome it? Absolutely. If we are allowing pods to run with a limit and it's possible that uh, there are two pods running with a big range of limits and collectively together they breach the total available resources. And mind you, the swap spaces are disabled on Kubernetes for, for the right reason. So we Cube can overcome it, but it when it overcome it, it basically overcome it without a backing to go further. Now, uh, sure, same thing applies to CPU as well. You can, Cube can overcome it from CPU and, and a memory viewpoint. And the OS are configured to overcome it as well by default, 
but they do have a soft space to fall back on to to kind of use a little bit more space when when uh, the physical memory is is reached okay so going back to our actual crime scene when we profile locally we never really saw the resource requirement to go beyond 6 gig it was kind of always in the 6 gig landscape landscape so we tried many different combinations of quality of service uh, and trying to just mitigate the issue while we investigate how to fix it and finally we settled on to this really crazy 31 gig as a memory requirement for the container leaving 2 gig um, as an enough for the systems to run and uh, but we would still see om kill we would still see the guaranteed parts being killed even though we don't really notice any spikes uh, or or a case where the limits have been breached and and at no point the node was found to be under duress it had enough memory left from the monitoring viewpoint that it was never really breaching its own 2 gig limit so just reviewing our board back we know that container behaves kind of reasonably we are still getting a kill uh, the quality of service is configured to the best capacity still there is a kill it is likely to be an overcommittal related issue and we know that the suspect is now either the kernel or kubelet okay so we had a bit of a, a lucky draw we found a critical events where we noticed a particular spike in the in the memory usage and this would go about all the way to a little over 28 gig still within the limits of 31 gig and uh, it, it was a lot less frequent than actual kill events um, and like i said in the bounds of memory limit but we still don't know why the containers were getting killed but we do have an indication that sometimes our processes are spiking up memory usage based on some unknown reason okay so we talked about om scores before what happens how does the om workflow gets triggered so um, linux manages this um, k message kernel messaging stream where all these um, events are then put in now k message kernel messaging parser then parses it and translate it into events through event handler now the two events that we are interested in is om event and om kill event om event kind of indicating hey memory surge is happening uh, there is there is actually an om situation ahead and the other one is okay we have an om we just need to do a recovery let's start the killing which is the om kill and then there are watchers which would watch to these events and take appropriate action so we would have watch kubelet would have the watch implemented and so would be the some some process in in linux kernel okay so there is nothing in application log that would indicate any problem with memory search but we know there is a search uh, very rarely we don't see any event of any kind of om on cube system parts cube uh, system processes or in any of the event log as far as cube is concerned um, the node is all healthy and it's all hakuna matata okay coming back to again so then based on that we conclude that it's not actually kubelet who is killing the process so let's look at kernel logs then and this is where we landed up then this is an excerpt from our kernel log and we can see that actually om kill was invoked and it was invoked because c group ran out of memory and you can see here in here that it's actually om kill invoked and then cube pod this is the application pod was killed as a result of memory limit and the actual usage was 31455 or 31.4 gig to 31.45 gig again there is a difference of about 1.5 uh, thousand kb um, that it's still kind of short of the reaching memory limit but it's almost reaching and you can see that swap usage is still zero and uh, on the os level the the swap is unlimited so we like you know memory usage is still unlimited from from a system view point kernel is using a little bit of memory but um, it's um, it's it's not the application usage so much and it has its own limit as you were seeing earlier 
Okay, so talking about the some of the metrics of C group here. Now, RSS is the uh, resident set size, which is a portion of the memory occupied by the process that's held in, in RAM. And it it's, uh, represents the anonymous memory and the SOP, SOP space memory. Now, RSS huge, on the other hand, is actually the uh, anonymous transparent memory that corresponds to the huge pages, which is, which is when 4 KB page size is not enough uh, for, for, for the sort of requirement you have if you are using large memory allocation. And in that case, a page size will become a lot bigger than 4 KB. And in that case, your resident set size huge would indicate the anonymous huge page memory. Okay, and then we also know that anonymous memory often abbreviated as anon is, is a memory mapped with no device or file backing. And then it, it also indicates the memory that's on heap and stack. So coming back to the second part of the log, as you can see here, we are saying that the pod uh, usage, the actual usage is this. And then within that pod, there are two containers. One is the pause container, which um, is really using very little memory. So um, not so much the focus right now, but this is the application pod. And you can see it is actually using an active anonymous memory of 31.38 gig and cache is a little bit. The RSS memory is also then 31.38 uh, gig. And the, the huge page memory is 29.9 gig. So all in all, there is only very little memory that's being used that's not on the huge pages. And uh, but we are still very much within the limit of container, which was 31.45, as it was said. So, um, so this is where we are. We are almost the process is almost reaching the limit, and it's getting killed. The OM is getting invoked, and it is getting killed. There is still enough uh, memory available on the node, so node is not under duress. And if you look at this um, total VM, we could see that we have a really ridiculous amount of virtual memory that's being allocated, 62.59 meg is being allocated. And it does look like we have some kind of uh, unused memory allocation that's that's going on. But coming back to like, you know, why the process was killed, we know that it was because it was reaching the, the memory limit. It was just a little bit shy. I, to be honest, I'm not sure why it was still getting killed when it was just shy of the requirements but uh, it is getting killed just being on, on the shy of requirements. And yeah, I must mention, if you haven't seen um, Ian Lewis' blog on Almighty Container, and if you uh, want to know more about what POS Container is, I uh, highly recommend reading through that blog. So then, um, as I mentioned, we were quite confused why the process is getting killed despite being shy of the limit. But uh, given it's only a few, um, few KB shy, uh, we are just going to accept that it is getting killed uh, there. Now, the problem we have is when we get OM killed, the behaviors are exactly like that. It's a runtime error. You can't recover from it gracefully, and you can't even fail safely. And this is exactly not what we want. So what we want is we want a safe recovery and handle more in a predictable fashion. So we looked at disabling the overcommittal and saving, failing more at an application level rather than abruptly being killed. And there's two settings on VM level where you could say overcommittal memory is disabled, two for disabled here, there are two for disabled. And then this another ratio aspect, which, which is only used when you disable the overcommittal. And it's a way of saying that I don't want my system to overcommit and only commit to the total allowed memory. Up until cube 18, this there was no way to provide this setting. If you provide this via user data script on your node provisioning side, it would essentially get uh, overwritten. In cube 18 onwards, the system parameters property that uh, now KOPS allows that you can use to configure your cube clusters but even in that, the overcommittal setting explicitly overcommit memory is equal to two is actually disabled. There is no way to systematically provide this setting and, and make sure your, your nodes are actually disabling the overcommittal. So really the only choice we have here is to, 
to um, on the fly update the nodes after they have come up and they have joined the queue cluster to override this over committal setting. So we kind of follow the script to to update all the nodes with this over committal setting. We obviously there's probably a reason why it's disabled, uh, but we don't know the the details. Uh, and that's why we selectively apply only for a particular fleet of nodes where this particular process goes in. So just reviewing our board, we know who our, who who the killer was. It was OS kernel, and we also know that actually our well behaved application was not truly well behaving, uh, but disabling the over committal definitely mitigated the issue. We can see that the process has been running for about nine hours without any interruption when the kills would happen. Uh, at least 15, 20 minutes so so frequently. So uh, this was a good mitigation, but obviously it is not a solution. We have an application that's uh, hogging more memory than it should. Uh, and then we reviewed the application and brought the memory footprint down, looked at more chunking option to again, help ameliorate this problem. So all in all, in summary, we have a container that was killed because it was reaching its memory limit and it was killed by OS kernel and disabling the over committal was uh, mitigating the issue. And But the actual fix is to reduce the memory footprint and guarantee the, the resource uh, quality of service and resource requirements of the pod to have more reliable experience on Kubernetes. And that's all I had. Um, thank you very much. I hope this was an interesting listening in to our experience and it was uh, uh, there was some learning for you in it. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you.